are valuable to talk about the differences between total hip replacement and resurfacing. So let's start with total hip replacement. Total hip replacement is um, the way that we rebuild or reconstruct an arthritic joint, uh, first developed by Dr. John Charnley out of, uh, out of uh, England. He was actually knighted for the development. Uh, hip replacement is typically made up of, of four parts. There's a, a metal shell um, that goes against the pelvis bone or the socket. Inside that metal shell, we typically snap in a piece of high-density plastic, ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. There have been other materials used in hip replacement. Ceramics have been used. Metal liners have been used. But given some of the problems with those materials, most surgeons now have gone back to using an ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene liner inside the metal shell. On the thigh bone or the femoral side, we typically take a stem. This is one variation. There's different variations depending upon company. Most of them have to do with surgeon preference and comfort level, but the titanium stem is then potted or placed inside the femur and impacted until it fits tight. And once it, we get a femur to fit in tight, then what will happen over time is the bone will bleed and grow into the rough surface on the stem, and that's what ultimately holds it in place. What re replaces the joint is we will put a metal or ceramic ball on the top of this stem, and that ball will rub against the high-density plastic interface, and that is what recreates the gliding surface of the joint. Very low friction, uh, so movement is done without a lot of effort. Um, very successful, very well done. Uh, historically, there were, there were problems with young patients uh, having hip replacement surgery because they tended to have problems with loosening or failure. And so uh, the Birmingham, out of Birmingham, England, they developed a, a device called a resurfacing or a hip resurfacing. So you can see one of the differences here is that instead of cutting the femur deep like we did on this side, this is more of a cap that we reshape or remill the femoral head. So we have special instruments that, teach, that, that do that for us accurately. And then once we have it remilled, we're able to glue on this metal cap in a very precise uh, manner. The socket for the resurfacing is a one-piece socket, so it's a one-piece metal socket. So this articulation is a metal-on-metal -metal articulation. And that socket is pounded into the bone, and then the metal rubs against the metal and recreates the smooth uh, gliding surface. Um, resurfacings have been very successful in certain groups of people. Young men with a diagnosis of osteoarthritis seem to do very well. So men. 30s, 40s, and 50s, it's still an option based on their comfort level. Uh, some women still come in asking for uh, resurfacing. In general, I would, uh, I would advise caution against resurfacing a female patient just because when we look at large registry datas uh, like Australia's, they show that the female patient tend to, have, tend to have about a four times higher complication rate with a resurfacing. So resurfacing is, is a very specific tool for a very specific group of patients. I still think it has a, a valuable role in the treatment of hip arthritis, but it's certainly not a procedure for everyone.